In November of 2014, one of the most anticipated game releases of all time happened, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the sequel to the immensely successful Five Nights at Freddy's. I cannot tell you exactly how hype the release of this game was. People from all around were exceptionally excited for Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and this time, Scott decided to make some decent amount of additions to the game. For example, Instead of having four animatronics, there's now ten, and technically eleven. And from the teaser images that Scott revealed, no doors, there's nowhere to run, and nowhere to hide except a Freddy mask, apparently. Oh, in terms of the classic four Five Nights at Freddy's games, I think the best is the first game, but my personal favorite is this one right here, number two. And the reason why is because this is the game that I'm most nostalgic about. This is the Five Nights at Freddy's game that I kind of reminisce about more so than the other games. Now you'll notice in this game there are two vents on the left and right, and then there's a big giant hallway which you can shine a flashlight down. And then you have a camera which you can flip through, and you have a flashlight that's built into the cameras. And the game tells you that shining the flashlight on the animatronics will slow their progress down, but you don't really get a chance to do that, and we'll explain that a little bit later. But you can see the three toy animatronics standing on the show stage, and shining the light on them really accentuates their details, like bringing the eyes out. Of course, in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, your big defense was the door. However, you had to be very, very cautious about it because you'd run out of power. In this game, you have a mask, and you put this mask on, and you can basically just kind of sit in your office with it on, and most of the animatronics will actually run away from the office. They'll move away with the mask on. They'll just go back to the sweating positions. But there are two animatronics that don't play by the same rules. And that's the puppet who sits in this box in the prize corner. And you notice this has wind up music box. That's a very vital mechanic in this game. And then there is Foxy who you will see at the end of the hallway. You have to shine the flashlight on him to keep him at bay. Those two animatronics do not play by the same rules. Everybody else, however, can be fended off with the mask. And this brings some interesting gameplay that we'll talk about a little bit later. So you see the music box begins to run out. We have to continuously keep winding up the music box to keep the puppet inside. Obviously, if you, if you fail to completely wind the music box, you'll get some pretty interesting results. And I'm sure you can if I, uh, figure out what that is. So one thing I really do like about this game is you see the animatronics at the end of the hallway. I think that is a really good visual, like seeing Chica down the hallway right there, I think it's just so interesting. And then of course you flip through the cameras, you use the flashlights to see the animatronics that are kind of tucked away in the darkness, like you see Bonnie trying to get into the, or sorry, Toy Bonnie trying to get into the vent right there, but you gotta keep the music box wound up. And now he's in the vent, and now you know for a fact he's about to show up right there in the vent. Uh, Toy Bonnie is probably my least favorite character in this game, and it's because if you ever try to attempt the Harder Nights at 1020, he is going to be basically the sole decider in whether or not you actually get to pass that night or not. Uh, the most annoying is probably Foxy, though. But as you see, oh, I got Endo, look at that, I got a rare screen, isn't that cool? Um, but I, I really liked the feeling of just like you get overwhelmed on nights one and two because Chica's in the left vent, Bonnie's in the right vent, you see Freddy down the hallway, the music box is winding down, you really don't know what to do, you know, you know, see Freddy's getting closer now and it's just like you're getting a little overwhelmed because you're just thinking well, all this stuff's happening at the same time, you see Freddy on the camera here, but at the same time it's just like this game makes you feel like oh there's ten animatronics here, they're all crowding me, like I'm, I'm being crowded right now, I see Bonnie's in the vent, you have to put the mask on, and then there's this really cool animation of Bonnie actually checking you out in front of your mask. That's a really cool animation. And like, you have this big feeling of, oh, you're, just, you're overwhelmed. And then you realize that everybody just kind of left because you put the mask on, and now they're all just kind of gone. I mean, Freddy's still at the end of the hall over there, but that's the big thing about this game. In terms of gameplay, you just put the mask on, and that's about it. Everybody except the puppet and Foxy. You just put the mask on and they'll go away. Now if you see Chica or Balloon Boy, Toy Bonnie, Mango, etc. in the vent, you just put the mask on, you wait a few seconds, they'll go away. There's an audio cue uh, that plays. 
Uh, Wither Chica also goes through the vent. Maybe a couple of other ones do too. But they show up in your office. You just put the mask on, and they'll leave. And this does present some pretty interesting gameplay in this game. See, night two, you're introduced to Mangle. Mangle actually shows up in the hallway. Now you're thinking Mangle might show up in your office, but apparently Mangle hooks a right and then goes into the vent. You just put the mask on, he'll go away. For Mangle, it's easy to tell because he plays like radio chatter or something like that, and you'll actually hear him when he's in the vent. He's the easiest to tell because as soon as he shows up in your vent, he plays the radio sound. You put the mask on and you wait for the sound to stop, and then that means Mangle has left. Um, Mangle could be a really interesting character, but you just put the mask on, you deal with him that way. But by the time you get, like, towards the end of Night 2, this game has kind of lost its mystique. Like, there's this discovery period at the beginning of a Five Nights at Freddy's game in which you think about, okay, what are the mechanics? What do I got to do to get my bearings straight? But for this game, even if you see Foxy down the hallway, you know for a fact, okay, if I just sit here and shine my light on him like that, there's not much he can do. But as I said, the music box is your big enemy here. The music box, when it runs out, stuff like that happens. The puppet flies at you, and he kills you. And of course, you don't want that to happen. Is the puppet, uh, I don't know what the gender of the puppet is. I'm just going to say him, just for simplification reasons. But you see, Chica's in your office now, and you put the mask on, and then Chica goes away. And then, while you have the monitor flipped up, you're winding up the music box, and then... You flip the cameras up again, check the vents, look at the hallway, make sure everything's cool, flip the camera up again, wind the music box. This is the gameplay loop that you get stuck into in this game. You just do this over and over and over and over, and that's all you do. Um, the music box gets faster and faster towards each night, meaning you have to give it more and more attention. And the music box begins draining so quickly that it gets to the point where you just have to maintain the music box. You forget everything else camera-wise. Of course, you gotta watch out for Balloon Boy because he takes your flashlight ability away from you. If Balloon Boy is in your office, you cannot use your flashlight whatsoever, meaning that Foxy is 100% guaranteed to kill you because you have to shine the light on Foxy to keep him in the hallway. But as I said, there's a main gameplay loop in this game. You wind the music box. You have to, because if you neglect the music box, the puppet's going to attack you. And since the music box drains so quickly, you have to ignore every camera in this game. You just have to. There is zero point in looking at any of the cameras in this game. There is a mechanic where if an animatronic is on the camera and you shine the light at it, you can actually stunt its progress temporarily. But you never ever get the chance to do it because you're so, so focused on winding the music box that there really is no purpose in having any camera in this game. You could easily take every camera out and just say, here, this is the music box panel, and it would basically be the same game. There are some times where you might see a character in the vent, but you just put the mask on, um, and they'll just go away after you see about five seconds or so. But as I said, you wind the music box, and then immediately you drop the music box, uh, sorry, you drop the camera monitor, put the mask on. If anybody's in your office, they'll just kind of go away after a while. Um, here's Golden Freddy. Isn't he cool? Nice. Uh, Golden Freddy is definitely my favorite character. So as you see, Golden Freddy is technically the 11th animatronic in this game. He just sometimes sits there, but he doesn't play by the same rules. So for Golden Freddy, you have to put the mask on or flip the monitor up and wait for him to disappear. Golden Freddy is just kind of designed just to make sure you're not slipping up at all. But I understand why some people don't like this game. I get it. Some people find the gameplay boring. Me, personally, I think the gameplay in this game is quite fun. I kind of enjoy just the repetition of it. Of course, once you die in this game, which is probably going to happen a handful of times, you have these mini-games that you can play. And the mini-games are very, very cool because they help to flesh out the lore. Like, for example, the Take Cake to the Children mini-game. Now you can see the crying child at the top of the screen and then you see purple guy shows up and he takes the kid out. And these are really cool as I say because they flesh out the lore of the game. The big mystery about the first game is who caused the bite of 87 and all this stuff. And then this game introduces purple guy. And you see the give gifts, give life mini games that the puppet does. Um, it's really interesting because it's like, why is the puppet giving these dudes gift? And why is he giving them life? And then you kind of see in the Save Them mini game that the puppet kind of draws them towards a particular room just to be dismantled by Purple Guy. 
So you begin thinking, like, is the puppet involved in this somehow? Like, there's a lot of intrigue to it. Here's Golden Freddy, who's about to show up, by the way. But, like, it's so interesting because you're like, okay, so is the puppet involved in this? Here's the Foxy Go, Go, Go minigame. And once you leave Pirate's Cove and you run and greet the five children, they go, hooray, and all that stuff. And then you have to do it one more time. But as I'm saying, this game introduced the purple guy, and he's just such an interesting character because you know he was the one who took out the children, and then he later apparently dismantled the animatronics, or at least something like that. At the time when this came out, this stuff was really exciting because all the mystery, all the intrigue of this game still existed. Scott Compton just didn't answer any questions, and instead he just gave you more questions. And then you find out that, oh great, this game is actually a prequel. This game takes place before the first. This game takes place, I think, in 1987. The first game, I believe, took place in 1993, if I'm not mistaken. And so, you see, in the Save Them minigame, Freddy is spelling out Save Them. And you have to follow the puppet. And if you look around, you'll find the other animatronics, you'll find blood stains. Uh, there's been a game apparently it's on a timer, or maybe I just didn't do it properly, but I believe Purple Guy is supposed to come out and attack you during this, if you would have followed the puppet. And then once you finish the nights, you'll see these pretty creepy minigames about you looking left, seeing Bonnie and seeing Chica, eventually they'll look straight at you. And these are really interesting minigames, because you see this from the perspective of Freddy. And now you see Bonnie and Chica are looking directly at you, and then the camera flashes and says, It's me, going into the next night. Then, you see Bonnie and Chico looking directly at you, and here's Golden Freddy. Um, at the time, we really didn't know who Golden Freddy was or what any of these guys were, particularly the mysteries involving the puppet. We just didn't know who these guys were or anything like that. That's a very, very beautiful shot, by the way. It's really interesting. And then here's the puppet. Once you complete, I think, night four, you see this one, and now the puppet's just following you around. It's like, who is the puppet? Like, what does it know? Like, the mystery made this game just really really exciting it just it made it just such an enthralling game and i understand some people might not be particularly fond of the gameplay loop i mean i think it's fine i think it's kind of fun i like the repetition of it but i get why this game's divisive and of course when you finish the game the five nights you get a paycheck is it worth the 100 dollars? Eh, i don't know and of course you unlock the sixth night and then here's me actually finishing the sixth night. Now, on PlayStation 4, this game was quite easy. Well, this is actually being played on a PS5, but it's the PS4 version. This was actually quite easy because on PC, one of the big things about this game is it, there's a challenge behind it because you have to be able to react pretty quickly. You have to be able to react to things that happen. As you see here, Freddy Fazbear is closing. Isn't that a shame? The animatronics are now scrappy to possible malfunctions. So, on the PC version, there's a bit of challenge to it because you have to be able to react pretty quickly. If you're winding up the music box, you're not just going to be able to just immediately drop the mask. You have to physically drag the mouse over. And you have to be able to react very, very quickly. But on the PlayStation, you can just mash R1, which is the mask button, while the camera is up. Uh, you'll see some examples like this. So, as soon as you flip the camera down, you immediately put the mask on. Sometimes an animatronic, such as Wither Chica, can force your camera down. And instead of you having to sit there and react, like, Oh God, Chica forced my camera down, let me be very, very fast and put the, camera, uh, put the mask on, rather. An example just like that, I'm spamming R1, which is the mask button. So, if Freddy or Chica pulls my camera down, the mask immediately comes down negating all of the reaction time that's needed to complete this. So I was able to complete nights one through six without dying. Uh, actually, I did die four times, but without dying that much, right? I'm not going to attempt 1020 because Toy Bonnie, I don't like you. I just want you to know that. Uh, I tried it on PC, never again. But overall, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is my favorite of the original four. The best is obviously the first game. There's no denying that. This is very divisive. Some people really like it. Some people think it's the worst in the series. Me personally, I'm really nostalgic about this game. I really like it. I think it's pretty cool. And I go back to this one quite a lot. And I think it's really fun. I think the main gameplay loop is cool. It's very, very repetitive. Basically, all you do is flip up the monitor 
wind the music box, put the monitor down, put the mask on. If nobody's there, immediately flip the mask up, shine the flashlight down the hallway to keep Foxy at bay. Then check the vents. If the vents are empty, flip the monitor up, wind the music box, wash, rinse, repeat. If somebody's in the vent, put the mask on, wait about five seconds, take the mask off, immediately shine the light down the hallway. It's very, very repetitive, and I get why people don't like it. I really do. It's very repetitive. You do the same thing over and over and over and over. Not a lot of variety. And this game has 10, I guess technically 11 animatronics. But in reality, there's only about three because eight of the 11 animatronics you can deal with in the exact same way. Only two, or I guess three animatronics actually require you to do something different. So as I said, despite the fact that this game has basically 11 animatronics, in reality, there's only about three instead. Because if most of the animatronics can be dealt with in the exact same way, more or less, they're all the same. Because, yeah, whether it's Withered Chica, Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, you deal with them all the exact same way. There's really no difference. I show up in your office, you put the mask on, they go away, that's it. The puppet and Foxy are the only characters who actually force you to switch it up, right? I do like the gameplay loop of Five Nights at Freddy's 2. I, although, you do kind of get bored after a while because you just kind of do the same thing over and over and over. It's like a repetitive motion. Um, 1020 is just ridiculous and I'm never going to attempt it because Toy Bonnie will sometimes just take his sweet time. Sometimes when you put the mask on, Toy Bonnie will immediately come out. Sometimes it takes him two to three seconds, he'll delay it. And the music box is basically going to be low most of the time and you have a lot of close calls and Toy Bonnie will sometimes just decide, no, you're not going to win, you're not good enough. So even if you do everything right, even if you have perfect, flawless execution, Toy Bonnie just decides to take it away from you anyway. But that's 1020. It's supposed to be ridiculously hard, unfair, whatever. But in conclusion, I do like Five Nights at Freddy's 2 a lot. I think this game isn't as bad as people say it is. And maybe just because I'm biased, because this is the game that I'm most nostalgic about. But all things considered, I do like this game. It's not the best in terms of gameplay. It really, really isn't. But I do like this game quite a lot. And I revisit it, and I'm very nostalgic about it. So, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, for me, is a 7 out of 10. I, l I do understand why people don't like this game. Uh, I, uh, I do understand. I mean, I mean not like dislike this game, but just the gameplay loop. But as I said, 7 out of 10, I think this game is pretty great.